Hi, comedy. The mystical, incredibly important, and irreplaceable art form of being the most annoying guy in a room. Specifically, stand-up comedy. And that's not to say that I don't like stand-up comedy. Of course, there are specials that I've seen that I think are great. But stand-up comedy and its role in society has changed as the internet has shown up, and kind of anybody with a phone can be what most people would call a comedian. And this, I think, has caused an identity crisis for a lot of stand-up comedians who have made their entire identity the fact that they're a comedian. And because of this, I feel like a lot of older stand-up comedians tend to lash out. They end up making really unfunny topical jokes about transgender people or gay people. I don't know, the Holocaust. And then when people say, hey, I think that's a little annoying of you. They double down and act as if it's their, like, right from God to be annoying. Comedy is the most important thing. If you can't laugh at stuff, then society ends. It's in the Bible. The role of the stand-up comedian just isn't the same as it used to be. Culturally, I think stand-up comedians had a lot more impact before the internet, and they're desperately clinging onto it now, regardless of how educated they are. Look at me, I'm Dave Chappelle, I'm gonna say I'm Team Turf, and they'll be like, I'm not transphobic, why are you guys saying that about me? This is the death of comedy. Stand-up in general has a really interesting place in society, and it has evolved a lot, which is why I think there's a lot of different ways that you can talk about it on the internet. My friend Gabby Bell has made several different videos about different stand-up comedians, YouTuber stand-up comedians, women stand-up comedians, and they're all great, you should watch them. But today, specifically, I don't just want to be talking about stand-up in general, I want to be specifically talking about TikTok stand-up. This video is sponsored by Native. Guys, it's 105 degrees where I live right now, and with the heat comes a little stink. It's a totally normal part of everyday life, but thanks to Native, I don't stink. I actually smell really good. As a lot of you know, I do have very sensitive skin, and Native's aluminum and baking soda free deodorants have not only been really nice on my skin, but also leave me smelling wonderfully. Native's deodorants are also 100% vegan and cruelty free. The texture of the deodorant feels great, it's not sticky, it dries really fast, and again, it smells really good. I honestly prefer Native to a lot of other mainstream brands simply because of their vegan ingredients. Everything that they're made of is really simple and familiar, like coconut oil and shea butter, while still leaving you smelling better than any other brand. Native sent me three scents to try out, citrus and herbal musk, lavender and rose, and my favorite of the three, aloe and green tea, which is also part of the sensitive skin line, which means it's made without baking soda and instead uses coconut oil and magnesium oxide derived from the Dead Sea. Ever heard of it? Yeah. That's what I thought. As hot as it is, summer is still coming to an end and fall is just around the corner, and you break in the fall with Native's new Cabin Collection. Featuring unique scents such as wild wood and cardamom, warm cider and cinnamon, toasted marshmallow and vanilla, and cashmere and rain. All of Native's deodorants offer up to 72 hours of odor protection, even when you're moving around all day or exercising. Three plastic-free deodorants would ordinarily be $39, but if you use my link in the description and code Ethan is online, you can get three plastic-free deodorants for just $26. That's over 33% off. You can also get 20% off toothpaste and body wash, again, with code Ethan is online and my link in the description. So if you want to save money while smelling great and supporting the planet with vegan ingredients, check out the link in the description and use my code Ethan is online. Thank you again so much to Native for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. TikTok is a place where the most obscure video can go insanely viral, which has caused a lot of people to use it for marketing purposes. It makes me sad because they're not good videos. Not the least of which are stand-up comedians who, while again, some clips can totally be funny, I really don't want to constantly be seeing fucking ads for your stand-up show on my goddamn For You page. Is it really that hard to understand? Please stop doing, doing this, this to me. More specifically, even than that, the video I tend to see the most from stand-up comedians on TikTok are like them duking it out with hecklers. And like, it can only go so many ways, right? Hey, look at me, I'm telling jokes on the stage. Hey man, you are not funny. Well, I don't, I don't particularly agree with that. You're bad. Yeah, well, uh... No, no you. I don't find these kinds of videos engaging at all, but they tend to go the most viral and I kind of understand why. People love to see that kind of conflict in public. They love to see someone's show get interrupted. It's like reality TV. Oh, did I? Yeah, you wouldn't uh, would you? Yeah. Like, part of me definitely feels bad when some drunk asshole is just interrupting your comedy show. That would paralyze me with anxiety. Don't get me wrong. But these always play out so similarly. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, well, you can be annoying in Mexican too. <laughs> You want a girl? 
girlfriend? Oh well, man, no dude wants to fuck you. I guess you have to. <laughs> Ha ha ha. It's like I'm back in third grade. <laughs> Cause this is what happens when you put people on the spot. They aren't that funny. <laughs> Am I still a pig? Oh, Oh, oh my god, how does this clip have 15,000 likes? There's- this is incomprehensible. People are just shouting. Now you're getting re by your own audience. <laughs> Alright, well, that joke's ruined. Ah, oh, it's so cringe. It hurts. You have to like somehow, as a fucking person, as a human being, stand on a stage and be like, well, I have to deal with that now. I don't like this. I don't want to see it. This hurts me. <laughs> Every joke's like a boner. Once I get yelled at by a lady, it's gone. I kind of realized, oh, wait a minute. I'm not a serial killer. But you're a serial killer. I think uh, the staff went home. <laughs> we should just kick her out. I completely agree, but that's uh, apparently up to the club. We're all the same color on the inside. Red. <laughs> Right. Like that, this isn't fun. This isn't fun. This isn't fun. This isn't funny. <laughs> this feels like just rage bait for people to be like, what a Karen, dude. I'm typing on the internet about what a Karen this is. She probably smells like fucking fish. And that kind of content I just find obnoxious. Like we get it. There are assholes in the world. This guy's fucking set was destroyed by this lady. She fucking obliterated him <laughs> and he posted it on the internet. I have a question. Perfect. That's exactly the perfect way to start a comedy show. <laughs> Where they just said no talking during the show, but you know what? I'll, I'll hear it. What do you want? Is that a Harrison Ford Witness t-shirt? What oh, t-shirt? It's Garth Brooks, you big dummy. <laughs> My apologies. It's okay. You're off that angry orchard. <laughs> What is, I don't get why it's so funny to just point out that they're drunk. Yeah, uh, you're drunk. It's like, yeah, obviously. People don't just like shout. Imagine going to a play where they don't serve alcohol and people are like yelling at the actors. There's a reason that doesn't happen. <laughs> and it does at comedy shows where famously they sell beer and other alcohol. Hey, you know what? You have a few angry orchards. You got some questions to ask, okay? <laughs> You're on a Harrison Ford binge? I think you're on a few different kinds of binges. <laughs> this is like the, the just fucking four jokes in a row. You're drunk. You're drinking a lot. You have alcohol in your system. And you're drunk. Like, oh, it's sick, dude. Owned. I, I don't know what I would do in this situation. Because like I said, part of me does feel bad for these comics that are trying to just do a show and someone's interrupting. But you have to like keep engaging with them, really? You have to do that? <laughs> like if you're gonna do it, be funny. Be funnier than that. It's not funny to do that. To be like, oh, well, you're drunk. Yeah, everyone at the fucking show is drunk. That's the only reason people are laughing. Destroying a heckler who wouldn't shut now. the hell up. Everything's different. Women are different now. Like women Jesus fucking Christ. Sorry, I have to stop it before really anything happens because holy shit, there's so much going on in this TikTok. This comedian is wearing a sequin Joker Funko Pop t-shirt. I need you to understand that this is a sequined Joker Funko Pop t-shirt that he's wearing. And then he starts this clip with Women are different now. Things are crazy. Just a lot for my brain to process, really. Also, my least favorite stand-up trope. Things are different now than they used to be. Yeah, that didn't, like, happen overnight. It's really annoying when comedians just act as if they just woke up from a 15-year coma. Man, you guys still got the, the Ford Bronco? That's crazy. <laughs> Whatever happened with the Sopranos? Did that ever end or... Like, it's not funny to just be like, Oh, well, man, think about how different stuff is. Is now. Women, they want consent? I'm from 1822 when women were seen as property. What? This is crazy. It's not a relatable experience. You're not being funny. You're not expressing anything that people relate to. You're just saying that you don't like how things are in current day and it's just kind of annoying. Like women talk during sex now? Did y'all know this shit? We know you talk during sex, you talk during comedy shows, you never shut the fuck up. Women talk during sex now? Sorry, I'm not trying to critique the comedy that he couldn't even get out because there was a heckler, but like, not funny. Didn't laugh. All right, that's enough out of you, all right? Hold it down, I got a job to do, all right? Are you single? No, that's not, yeah, look at, is that your dude? 
No, dude, choke the fuck out of her, all right? We give you- What? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Sorry. I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't like to hear that. That's not comedy. <laughs> it's a real sign of an amateur comedian when you just put a little bit of pressure and he just jumps straight to the fucking misogyny. Yeah, you know what? Is that your boyfriend? Kill her. Kill her for me. Do it for my honor. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a joke. You couldn't get your hands around his thick fucking hot dog neck. No, I'm kidding. I, I would. I, I don't even want to be mean to you because I saw what you did to that guy's ankles in misery. And <laughs> a misery reference, like a novel that came out in 1987. Uh, really? I don't imagine this guy has the most updated cultural references. But also, like, you could be funny. Stay married, though, guys. That's the whole point. In spite of what's going on in the front row. <laughs> Stay married. <laughs> Except you, sir. Get divorced. You can do better. All right, let's be real. Everybody else stay married. You get the fuck out of here now, okay? Just I, run. I can't run. Oh, you, that's how she got him right there. Dude, my most hated stand-up trope. I hate my wife humor. Can't run away. She's got you trapped. <sighs> I just don't think it's funny. Like, I'm not trying to shit on amateur comedians or whatever, but you have to be able to work under pressure. It's kind of in the job description. I've already talked about how stand-up comedy isn't like my most fucking favorite thing in the world, but holy shit, you can't buckle that easily and just immediately revert to being unfunny. So gay. I'm gay? Yeah. I'm not gay. gay. I'm the love master, baby. Yeah. Why did people cheer for that? That's not a joke. It, it's not. It's not, it's, huh? Yeah, I'm as hard as Final Jeopardy. That's right, baby. I'll take you out for breakfast. I could hold two cups of coffee and a dozen donuts right there, baby. Yeah, I was circumcised by a bandsaw. That's right, baby. It's just, what? Uh, <laughs> oh, you're calling me gay? Well, I will have sex with you. Think about that. That's my joke, folks. That's my fucking joke. I was circumcised with a bandsaw. My dick is made of concrete. It's just not a good joke. It's not even a joke. It's not. Like, I'm convinced comedy clubs all have, like, intentional gas leaks in them so people laugh more because this is insane. One night with me, you'll be sweating like Jessica Simpson taking the SATs. That's right, baby. <laughs> You go to school with me, you'll graduate magna cum loudly. That's right, baby. I'm the love. How? How can you just like say stuff like that and be like, yeah, I'm a comedian. Yeah, I do comedy shows. Not now you're not. <laughs> this is called how to deal with a heckler. I will have sex with you. Think about it. <laughs> Got her. All right, comedian owns heckler in three words. What are those three words? Hopefully they're not I fuck you like the last fucking guy. I want to open up a gay coffee shop. I'm gonna call it a gay cap. Hey! Nah, not good. Not even like, I'm not saying that because it's like offensive or whatever. It's just not like, what's the joke? Gay people go, hey, that's funny. Come on down and try our lattes. <laughs> our best seller will be big black coffee. Is it funny? Ask yourself. Here's a quiz. Is it funny? Yes or no? Submit your answers now. Text this number at this answers and tell us in the comments. My friends make fun of me because I like to go to gay bars, but they don't understand that regular bars don't have what I like which is free drinks and compliments. <laughs> I don't care. That is a funny way to respond to a heckler. And th I wouldn't even say that's a heckler. That's just like someone drunk and like wanting to participate in the show. It's like the kind of people that like show up in a bigger streamer's Twitch chat and want to like fully derail the stream for what they personally want. But you know what that doesn't happen is twitch.tv slash online where we're always on track and we're always doing the things that I say we're going to do on stream. I put playing Among Us with Dennis Prager in my, in my stream title. <laughs> I'm, I'm clickbaiting guys. I'm sorry. We're always doing it. We're streaming all the time and it's great. So while like 90% of the jokes that he said were incredibly unfunny, this is a great lesson in delivery. Does it make eye contact? Says I don't care in a very monotone way. It shocks you. It makes you laugh. I'm explaining the joke because 
I, what else do you want me to do? Fucking shit on the rest of his jokes? Because I can, I'll do it. This is also a great example of how powerful TikTok marketing can be for comedians. We waited and watched this entire set of terrible jokes just to get to the part where there is a heckler that wasn't even really a heckler. But regardless, boom, 41,000 likes just like that. Jessica Mendoza, for the first time, just this past year, became the first female broadcaster to broadcast a baseball playoff game. In 2015, yeah. there were so many men on Twitter just being like, she doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. She never played professional baseball. And I'm like, you never played professional baseball, child. <laughs> what are her qualifications, huh? What the fuck does she know? I don't know, two-time Olympic gold medalist went to Stanford? It sounds pretty qualified to me. We we'll just get so upset at this thing. Next. You're... Next? What? What? <laughs> See, I think this one's great because everyone in the crowd is like, what? <laughs> hey, is that what you meant? Or you were offended that I was standing up for women? No, I love women. Ah, uh, oh, this hurts, man. This isn't, this isn't fun. Just like, oh, just get them out. Just, yeah, it's just so painful. You do? Okay, so what do you mean by next? Because you're not going to get away from that. <laughs> no, no, explain what you meant. Because you and I can talk later. Oh, yeah. That, I'm sorry. Did I start this? How about you talk in the parking lot right now? Oh, let's go. No, seriously. If you want to interrupt me in front of all these people and they're not even fucking stand up for what you were saying, get the fuck out of the show. Okay. I love that. He's like, let's go meet in the parking lot right now. I will kick your ass. <laughs> that, see, that is a better way to deal with a heckler than just like standing there and screaming. Threaten to beat him up. He apologized. <laughs> One of the last comedians that I found on TikTok is uh, Jimmy Carr. I find him incredibly creepy and I don't know a lot about him. Um, I don't think I want to. You'll see what I mean. I used to date this incredible looking woman just Beautiful. I mean, we're still together, but she's let herself go. <laughs> it's as if they're an ugly woman at the back going, boo. <laughs> Sorry, motherfucker, what? You can't laugh like that. It's not allowed. You're not supposed to, to laugh in that way. Laughter is supposed to be joyous. That is a sound of Satan. That is a sound of pain. It doesn't even smile, just ha ha ha, ha 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 ha. Motherfucker, that is a bird call. What, sorry? Rude. <laughs> so sorry, when I said there's an ugly woman at the back, you went, hey, he's talking to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rude. I mean... Self-esteem, there's nothing I can do about your self-esteem. That's why they call it self-esteem. What's, what's your name, madam? Kelly. Kelly, I'm gonna go soft on you, like every man that's ever seen you naked. Why does he look like that? Why are his eyes yellow like a Sith Lord? Why does he feel like he was built in Detroit Become Human? Who is this man? I'm frightened of him. Also, again, woman heckles set, initiate fucking misogyny protocol. I don't know. It doesn't happen as much when men do it. When men do it, it's never like, you're ugly and fat. But when women heckle, it's always immediately. Like, you dumb fucking bitch, I'll kill you. <laughs> No, I'm just saying, Kelly, you're what dimmer switches were invented for. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You ever wonder why there's always a dimmer switch in a, in a bedroom? That. He just said the same joke twice. Are you allowed to do that? <laughs> I think like most professional sports, if stand-up comedians want to take themselves as seriously as they say they do, they should have rules and regulations. Rule number one, you can't tell the same joke twice. Even if you rephrase it, it's not a different joke now. You know, that's a foul turnover. You know, I, I have to eject you. You have to go to the timeout box. Rule number two, Jimmy Carr is not allowed on a stage. He's not allowed to tell comedy because he does not know what it is. He has not been programmed with comedy in mind. Of all the stand-up comedy tropes that I've personally experienced, my least favorite to be in the crowd for is crowd work. And that's kind of like the cornerstone of this whole video, right? Is interacting with a crowd and how annoying it is to watch and deal with when you're really not there for that. <laughs>
And a comedian that I saw in person recently when I went to go see Brendan Schaub with my good friend Nick, he did a video about it right here. Here I am, look, I am looking, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Jerry Seinfeld. But we saw Harland Williams at that show, who's known for uh, doing crowd work, and it's not good. <laughs> it's bad, it's not funny. Sir, you're all alone, I'm sorry to see that. You're what? Your girlfriend's in the bathroom. That's kind of personal, isn't it, sir? <laughs> Get a load of Johnny, I don't give a fuck over here, huh? <laughs> you wanna tell us what number she's doing while you're at it? I'm like 99% sure he said that exact same joke when I went to the show that we saw him at, but it's still funny. And don't get me wrong, this might seem funny at first, and it kind of is, especially when he gets a little more obscure. Uh, at one point he just pointed at someone in the crowd and said, that's my son, everybody, give it up for my son. And everybody started clapping, and that's kind of funny. Not something you usually see at a comedy show. But when it's the entire set, it gets a little old. It feels like when you have the weird substitute teacher, you know the one. The one that brings candy and is always like picking on very specific people and like really wanting to engage when the best substitute teacher just puts on a movie and shuts the fuck up. Sir, if you could look away, I'm doing a show. <laughs> like, I just, it doesn't click in my brain. Sir, if you could look away, I'm doing a show. Not as, it, like, it's it, the shock of like, oh wow, that's weird for him to say. But it's not funny! <laughs> It's funny, like, the first time you've ever heard it, maybe, if you're drunk and at the show in person. Otherwise, I just don't think it's funny. Like, mathematically, they just shouldn't spark joy in your brain. How are you, guy? Let's get to know you a little bit, and then I gotta pop right into my act. What's your name, guy? Will. Will! Okay, Will what? Peterson. No, I meant Will what? <laughs> what will you do? This is really sad. <laughs> Crowd work in general is just not my favorite thing. I don't think it's very funny. And I mean, according to the comments on Nick's video about Brendan Schaub, where he talked a little shit on Harlan Williams, people think it's a fucking skill that you cannot replicate unless you're some talented comedian. When half the show, he's just pointing and being like, sir, can you please, um, uh, can you stop chewing so loud? I'm doing a show. It's a great excuse not to write material. And I don't know, maybe I just don't understand comedy or jokes or laughter. You know, all I know is uh, video games and gay sex. Uh, <laughs> but I think we can, you know, expect people who are professional comedians to be a little better than that. <laughs> comedy is obviously subjective, and I'm not trying to police what you should or shouldn't find funny. I just think that there's very obvious situations that aren't really funny to anyone, that a lot of these heckler destroyed videos end up falling into. It's just a lot of cringe moments, and it's not a lot of fun. Harlan Williams is a great example of someone who is a heckler, as a comedian. And on paper, that sounds like a really good idea, but it's not. So... I don't have a greater thesis for this video, other than I think stand-up's just kind of annoying. I feel like a lot of stand-up comedians and their fans take them very seriously, when it's sort of a dying medium. And to be good, you have to actually be really good. Which is why you have timeless specials by George Carlin and even by Dave Chappelle that aren't exactly replicable today, even by Dave Chappelle himself. But that's where I'm gonna call it for today. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please click like if you had a good time or subscribe for more videos just like this every week. Make sure to stay tuned for my next video where I do a comedy special, but it's not very special at all. Bye. Thank you so much to my incredible supporters over on Patreon. If you wanna support the Patreon, it's just $5 a month for your name at the end of every video and video thumbnails a day early.